homosexuality was something that Johnson talked about a lot over the years in what we reviewed. He called it inherently unnatural. He said it was a dangerous lifestyle. We found a clip where he supported a ban on gay adoptions where he said that homosexuality was a behavior. And because of that, it wasn't protected from anti-discrimination laws. We are learning a lot more about the largely unknown Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, who appears to be a religious zealot to say the least. I mean, he thinks that gay people are dangerous. How so? I mean, there's a lot of dangerous stuff happening in the country right now. Gay people, not part of it, not as far as I can see. Now, his views on gay marriage and the possibility of the Supreme Court overturning its ruling legalizing it makes it pretty clear that he is in fact a religious zealot. Here's more. The second biggest piece of news that day besides Roe was Clarence Thomas's concurring opinion, where he said we should revisit the rulings that struck down the same that allowed same sex marriage, that allowed contraceptions, that legalized gay sex. And this was an opinion that was so far out there. That even the very conservative Supreme Court wasn't willing to go along with this. Thomas wrote that opinion alone. But Johnson actually very, very strongly endorses this opinion from Thomas. He defends it. Take a listen to him right here on that day. There's been some really bad law made. They've made a mess of our jurisprudence in this country for the last you know, several decades. And, and maybe some of that needs to be cleaned up. And what, what Justice Thomas is calling for is not radical. In fact, it's the opposite of that. Now, we should note his office told us that he views those cases as, as settled law. But we did find another instance in our story in 2015 where he, it's during the presidential election, and he actually says that the new president can support, appoint justices that might overturn same sex marriage. Yeah, anytime a far right politician tells you, don't worry, don't worry, these previous Supreme Court rulings are settled law. I would never try to overturn any of this. You should just consider what happened with Roe v. Wade, okay? They, mm -hmm. They're usually lying about that. And John, I mean, look, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm so fatigued from people like Mike Johnson and quite frankly, the media coverage of politicians like him. Mostly because in some cases, I think that there's hysteria. In other cases, I think the hysteria is totally legitimate and warranted. I think it is definitely the case when it comes to Mike Johnson and the statements that he's made both in the past and in the present. One thing I'll bring up though is when it came to the continuing resolution on funding the government, he was willing to work with Democrats in that the continuing resolution didn't cut funding to various programs that the House Freedom Caucus is so thirsty to cut funding for. So, so what do you make of that? What do you make of that given his statements in the past and what he did with the government funding bill? Yeah, I think it's interesting that you bring up both of those things because it's the combination of those two things that make him much more of a traditional right wing whack job in American politics of the sort that we should be used to over the course of the last few decades. He's a person whose brain is fundamentally broken in a lot of different ways because of the dogma that he absorbed as he was growing up. He doesn't have the capacity or the willingness to question literally any of it. And hey, what do you know? It turns out that when you have a hyper focus on hierarchy in society and think that literally everything should be ranked, um, he's on top in his ranking in all these different classifications. What a weird coincidence. Coincidence. He would have been fine if it didn't work out that way. And he was a second class citizen in some of these. It just turned out that he gets to be on top and he gets to use the power of government to enact revenge on all the people he hates and fears. It's weird that that works out that way. But as you point out, he also allowed the government to be funded. And so, look, there are plenty of uh, like new style whack jobs that hate members of the LGBT community just as much as him, but they also really don't care if literally anything functions. Whereas Mike Johnson wants a stable status quo that maintains mm -hmm. low tax rates, business profits, and continually running on taking rights away from the groups that they demonize. Like that's that's traditional Republicanism. So I find him almost comforting in that regard and horrendous in all the other ones. Yeah, you're so right. And I'm so happy you say it because 
Sometimes I'm I'm worried that I'm so jaded and I'm so sick of the hysteria that I don't take things seriously enough. Um, you know, because there are so many fear mongery stories in the news about various political figures. But I think that your analysis is totally spot on. While his you know statements about various marginalized communities, um, including members of the LGBTQ community, like disgust me. There's no question. There is a certain part of him that is distinct from the Matt Gates's of the world. Like Matt Gates doesn't care about government agencies lacking the funding necessary to function if it means that he can engage in political theater that he thought would benefit him politically, but actually polling shows hurt him, certainly in the state of Florida where he might pursue a gubernatorial run. But I want to go to one other video because in this video, you're going to see Mike Johnson share what he believes the role of the government should be. And it's far more authoritarian for my taste. Let's watch. One of the primary purposes of the law and civil government is to restrain evil. We have to acknowledge collectively that man is inherently evil and needs to be restrained. That, see, that's the problem with the radical left. They don't acknowledge a God. So we also found Johnson saying that he supported imprisoning abortion doctors, the elimination of hate crimes. He backed a Louisiana abortion ban that did not have exceptions for rape or incest. So when he's talking about restraining evil, this is the sort of thing that he means. We live in a country that that has a constitution calling for the separation of church and state. So whether or not any American believes in a God is entirely irrelevant. And it's especially irrelevant in the context of our government and policy decisions that are made by our elected lawmakers. With that said, that statement from Johnson really made me appreciate the foresight that our founding fathers had in crafting a system of government that has checks and balances. Because if Johnson were able to, I guess, accumulate as much power as he wanted for himself, then he could carry out the kind of policies that would literally imprison doctors that he doesn't like because they perform medical procedures he disagrees with. Luckily, there are checks in our system that prevent one person from doing anything like that. But does that give you any ease, John? Or are you concerned with the authoritarian role he sees? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that there are in some cases still checks on some of this, and uh, you know, we go out of our way to acknowledge that we we try to be fair so often to people who do nothing to earn it, and there's no reward for doing it. Like we've pointed out, you know, the, the instances in which the Supreme Court has not done the crazy thing over the past couple of years. There's been a few cases like that. We always point that out, and so that's great, you know. And sometimes Biden does the right thing, and sometimes the Democrats stand up in the Senate or something. Um, so that's good. When when those checks and balances are there, that's good. But it's also horrible that still in 2023, our government is infested at so many levels and seemingly increasingly so with people who believe such utterly insane things as him. A guy who would, you know, like arrogantly state that he has a perfect map to what evil is in the modern era. And you talk to like a reasonable person who is not, you know, like drinking the Kool Aid of his particular, I would say, inherently flawed interpretation of right wing Christianity. Um, and there's it, it's nonsensical. The things that he would point out to be evils, it's literally just people living their life doing consensual <laughs> sex acts that have nothing to do with him. I mean, he might be really interested in them, clearly. He's been talking about them in podcasts for literally years, um, but they don't hurt him. Right. So I don't know what evil is supposed to be. Meanwhile, there are people dying in the streets. They're on on TDR this morning. JR and I were talking about his his quotes about the American Holocaust of abortion or whatever. He doesn't give a damn about the maternal mortality rate going up over the past few years or the the massive gaps between maternal mortality in different racial groups. So there's so much actual, I think, objective evil going on where people are actually being harmed, and the government could protect them, but. His perfect guide to morality has seemingly done nothing to clue him into that. Yeah, I think you make a really great point. And just to bolster what you just said, I want to remind the audience of a comment that Johnson had made in the past. This is graphic too. 
Johnson advocated for the criminalization of gay sex. Like, how do you enforce that? You creep. Like, how do you enforce that? <laughs> you know, like look through their windows and be like, hey, hey, is there sodomy happening in there? Like, mm -hmm. mind your own business. But let me continue with the rest of it. So the criminalization of gay sex and went so far as to partially blame it for the fall of the Roman Empire. Yes, that's Only that's partially. What led, just partially, right? Yeah. I'm sure that had something <laughs> that's to fair. do with it. I mean, come on. Anyway. So apparently some men really do think about the Roman Empire on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for Johnson, it's thinking about gay sex and how that's somehow miraculously associated with the, the fall of the Roman Empire. Obviously, that's nonsense. But look, you're right. I guess we should be somewhat relieved that he is representative of the more traditional lunacy in the Republican Party. And uh, at least he got the government funded. Temporarily, of course, uh, it was a continuing resolution. It's not a more permanent uh, government funding bill, but he had to craft something that Democrats would vote for, and he did that. So that shows a good faith effort to reach across the aisle and do what needs to be done to get his, you know, mission accomplished, his job accomplished. He just look if you have these personal beliefs, that's fine. But as as a representative of the United States of America, do what's best. To represent your constituents and the people in this country, your little personal quips with other people's identities and lifestyles really shouldn't play a role in that. If you enjoyed this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.